Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and in this video we are going to talk about Module 3 in Lesson 5. Uh, the topic is continuity. So we talked in the previous video a lot about limits, and in general the takeaway was that uh, for most of the work that we will do, especially in this course and most of the uh, multivariable calculus courses that are out there, uh, we don't spend too much time actually calculating limits in the multivariable context because of the difficulties in doing so analytically. We do spend much more time, and I'll just scroll up here to remind you, spending uh, uh, calculating or showing that limits don't exist. It's a little easier to do that. In the previous video, we talked about how, for example, using this result, that if you approach the point you want to calculate the limit at via two different paths, and you get two different answers, then the limit does not exist. So in this video, we're going to talk about continuity, which is a step up, if you will, from limits. So let's just go through this definition. Um, and all of this, of course, can be generalized to functions of three variables. So suppose f is a function with domain d. Uh, we say that f is continuous at the point a, b if when you evaluate the limit and when you calculate the value of the function at that point, they are the same. So that's what continuity means. Same thing that continuity meant in the um, single variable context. When f is continuous at all points on its domain or some subset of its domain, we say that f is continuous on d. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's nothing really that changes, luckily, unlike the previous video, in this context in terms of the mechanics of, you know, evaluating um, whether a function is continuous or not. So um, one uh, or a few things that I want to point out here. Um, the first is that as in single variable calculus, so um, continuity implies we can evaluate the limit as simply the value of the function. In other words, evaluating the limit is the same as evaluating the function. That's what continuity gives us. So that is making things a lot easier because, again, we had some difficulty um, thinking or, or working through uh, actually calculating limits analytically in this multivariable context. The second thing um, to know is that the same continuity um, properties and theorems um, transfer over. So same continuity theorems from single variable 1D uh, calculus uh, transfer over. So things like, you know, if you have two functions that are continuous and you take the sum of them, then they are continuous. Or the difference, right? Also, um, a number times a function is continuous uh, if the function is continuous. Things like that transfer over. Um, and one particularly nice property that transfers over, and, I, and I've actually written down some of this stuff down here, um, is that multivariable polynomials, like this function, for example, are continuous functions. So multivariable polynomials in this multivariable context are sums and differences of multiples of terms like this, products of powers of x and y. If we're talking about functions of three variables, it would be products of powers of x, y, and z. Uh, let's put an r here. Those are called multivariable polynomials. Here's a little example. Um, and those functions are continuous on all of r2 if it's two variable, or all of r3 if it's three variable. Um, another result is down here, which I'm going to spend a little more time on the next page. Um, if f is continuous on a domain d, and g is continuous uh, on the range of f, then this is just the composition of continuous functions. So it's continuous on that original domain d. So again, these are all of the rules that you know, properties and results from single variable calculus, and they transfer over to this multivariable context. Makes things a lot easier when we actually want to um, evaluate where functions or, or determine where functions are continuous. So let me head to the first example then down here. Um, so, for what set of points is the function f of x, y given by this continuous? Well, so this is a rational function, so I left a little space up here um, to also tell you that uh, 
the same fact from single variable calculus transfers over. So for rational functions, you might remember that a rational function is a ratio of polynomials. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for a function that's a ratio of polynomials, um, it's continuous everywhere except where the denominator equals zero. We saw that in the single variable context. For example, if I looked at the function f of x equals, I don't know, x over uh, x squared minus 1, then this would be continuous on r minus the points uh, negative 1 and 1. Two things to mention here. How did I get negative 1 and 1? Well, I set x squared minus 1 equal to 0. And then I'm just going to factor this difference of squares. And then that gives me uh, x equals plus and minus 1. So that's how I got um, negative 1 and 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second thing to mention is just notation. So uh, this is the set of real numbers. This is a set. These are these curly braces. And it includes two elements, negative 1 and 1. And then this here is kind of what you would uh, intuitively think it might mean. It means take this set of all real numbers and subtract, take away these two specific real numbers. Um, this is pretty common set notation. Um, there is another notation for the difference, quote unquote, of two sets. Um, sometimes you will see that with uh, this backslash um, notation, but to make things easier to just intuitively grasp um, I will stick to the minus notation. That's a little easier to think about. The only thing I want to caution you there is that this is not like arithmetic minus, like 2 minus 3. This is a, a set difference, if you will. But anyways, it's um, a, a convenient way to express a lot of results for continuity, um, especially for rational functions. So let's apply that result right here. Um, back to this function, which is a rational function. This is a multivariable polynomial, sums or differences of multiples of powers of x and y. Uh, this is also a multivariable polynomial downstairs. So the whole thing is a ratio of polynomials. It's a rational function. So where is it continuous? Well, we're looking for where the denominator is 0. Where is x squared plus y squared equal to 0? Um, and we've answered this question in different contexts before. Because in our class, we're thinking of x and y as real numbers, um, x squared is non-negative, so it's never negative. And therefore, if I add something that's never negative and something else that's never negative, and I get 0, only possible way is if both of them are 0. The minute any one of these is not 0, it'll square to a positive number, and then that will not add to 0. Um, so this is telling us that the only place where this denominator is 0 is at the point 0 comma 0. So uh, f is continuous based on what we had said above on the entire uh, plane minus the point 0 0. Okay, so that's our um, conclusion. And then I'm going to add in here maybe we'll change the try to make it look like the font of the example here. A little triangle <laughs> example 5.5. So let's talk about a similar result. Um, so how about uh, for what set of points? So I'll just say where is f of x, y equals ln of this function. And actually to make things a little easier to talk about, let's call this not f of x, y. Let's call this h of x, y. Okay, so we are adding an example here. And why am I doing this? Um, I'm just going to scroll up really quickly to show you. Uh, I'm doing this because I want to illustrate this part of the lesson. So we had mentioned a little earlier how many of the facts of continuity port over. And I'm going to try to illustrate this number three here. This is about the continuity of a composite function. So let's scroll down here and take a look at our h of xy function again we can see that h of x, y equals g of f of x, y. Where g is the outer function, which is natural log, 
Uh, and then f of x, y is the function that is the inner function. So it's the same one from the example we just finished. Um, so that's, I had constructed this function to do that deliberately. Um, notice that g is a single variable function. And we know from calculus one a lot about locks. We know, for example, that ln of t is continuous on zero infinity. We exclude zero because we can't calculate ln of zero. That's undefined. Um, we also know from the above example that this function, f, is continuous on r2 minus 0, 0, the origin. So we have those facts. So let me scroll up again to our statement uh, and see how much of the statement we um, are, are satisfying already, hypotheses. Um, let me go first to the conclusion, right? What we want is information about the continuity of the composite function. Um, the conclusion here is that the composite function is continuous on D. And what is D? Well, the statement starts with if, so assumptions, F is continuous on D. So I'm going to scroll down here, and here is our F is continuous on this domain. So in this problem, in this problem, D is R2 minus the origin. Great, so now I know what D is, so I'm going to scroll back up. So I have, uh, I've taken care of the first if here, and then there's an and, so there's another hypothesis here. G is continuous on the range of F. So there are two things that I have to do here. First, I got to figure out what the range of F is. And then I got to make sure that G is continuous on that range. So I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to calculate um, range of F. And, or I'm just going to remind myself, and is G continuous on that set? Okay, so, you know, really this is the, the answer, the question that I want to answer. Is G continuous on the range of F? That's literally the second part of that, of the statement. Um, I don't necessarily need always to calculate the full range of F. So we're going to see in this example that that's exactly the case. So range of f, this is the set of outputs. Remember that's from a previous lesson. Um, and this is, in our case, the set of f of x, y values. So let's go ahead and take a look at f of x, y, see what we can learn from it. Um, the first thing that jumps out is that everything, you know, we're adding, we're squaring, everything is non-negative. Um, I'm, I'm never going to get a negative number from f. So f of x, y is always going to be positive. Um, already, uh, that's good news because the range of f, the set of z values, is exactly what gets um, inserted into g as a, a, an x value, if you will, a t value. And we can insert any positive number into g and g will be continuous. So, so far, so good. The only thing we have to worry about potentially is this. In other words, is f of x, y ever equal to zero? Um, and the answer to that, we can answer that by just, you know, investigating it really quickly. Um, in order for f of x, y to equal zero, I would have to set this up. And look what happens. Something interesting happens. So um, the only way for a fraction to be zero is if the numerator is zero. So this would have to be true. And from here, like we said before, because x and y are real numbers, this would imply that x and y are both zero. But this is a problem, because when x and y are both zero, the denominator is undefined. So in fact, the function f is not defined uh, when x and y are both zero. That's actually one of the reasons that we excluded it from the domain d. So now we come full circle to this realization that, to write this more um, compactly, uh, on D, f of x, y is bigger than zero. So in other words, on the domain D, uh, the values that you get when you substitute any x, y in the plane other than the origin into f are positive. Uh, and that is great information for this part of the statement for continuity of composite functions because the second part is what matters. G is continuous on all positive numbers. 
the range of f on d is all positive numbers. So now I can scroll back up, check off the second part, and then I get this conclusion. So I can conclude that the composite function is continuous on d. So therefore, h is continuous on d, which is r2 minus the origin. Okay. This is our um, conclusion. And I have tried very hard here to follow the letter of the law, so to speak, which is uh, what the statement said. I'm now going to redo this in about 30 seconds the super fast way. Uh, and the super fast way is going to say, you know what, this function, everything's positive, so um, is uh, positive, positive everywhere, is never equal to zero. Okay, those are just observations. That's the first one. Number two, ln of t is continuous on zero infinity. Therefore, h is continuous on r2 minus the origin. Okay. That's the very quick way to do this. And again, it's quick because we're using a lot of the intuition that we just got from having done this longer explanation. The intuition being that we have to figure out how the outputs of the inner function relate to where the outside function is continuous, right? These outputs are positive and they're never zero. That's exactly inside this interval. Um, and ln of t is a continuous function on that interval. Therefore, the composite function h is continuous on the x value, the x y values of where the inside function is continuous. Um, so that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next lesson.